The 12th of March, 1938. German troops cross the border with Austria and invade the country without firing a single shot. They are not met with armed resistance, but with cheers and flowers. While thousands of Austrians turn out to greet Adolf Hitler as he travels first to Linz and then on to Vienna, terrified Jews, leftists, and other opponents of the Nazi regime race towards the country's borders, hoping to reach them before they are closed. But most would become trapped in a rapidly Nazifying Austria. In the weeks that follow, there is pogrom-like violence across the country. Austrian Nazis and others beat up, attack, and humiliate the Jews. They force them to scrub the streets, clean public toilets, and perform humiliating exercises. Many decide to try to leave Austria, and lines appear at consulates across the city of Vienna. Several months later, the Nazis begin to operate the Mauthausen concentration camp near Linz, and in December 1939, the SS orders the construction of a second concentration camp, Gusen, just a few kilometers from Mauthausen. Its first commandant becomes Karl Chmielewski. Karl Chmielewski was born on the 16th of July, 1903 in Frankfurt am Main, then part of the German Empire. He left school in 1918 without graduating, and then moved to Munich where he trained to be a wood sculptor. He then opened his own business, but due to the economic crisis in the late 1920s, he had to close it. He got married, had one son, but struggled financially and did odd jobs to support his family. On the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler was appointed Chancellor of Germany by President Paul von Hindenburg. By the time the Nazis came to power, Chmielewski had already been a member of the SS, which he had joined in 1932, and in March 1933, he also became a member of the Nazi party. Whilst at the SS, he worked as a staff member of Heinrich Himmler, the leader of the SS. His fanatical devotion to the Nazi cause paid off for Chmielewski, as he quickly climbed the ladder of the SS apparatus, and in 1935, he was transferred to the Columbia concentration camp to serve on the commandant's staff. Columbia Concentration Camp was established by the Nazis in July 1933 in Berlin and was filled primarily with political prisoners. It was notorious for the torture meted out to its detainees, most of whom were communists, social democrats and Jews. The camp closed in 1936 to make way for the expansion of Berlin Tempelhof Airport and after its closure, the remaining prisoners were moved to the new facility established at Sachsenhausen. Chmielewski was also transferred to Sachsenhausen, where he worked from 1936 to 1939 as an administrative leader. In the spring of 1940, he was transferred to the Commandant's office at the Mauthausen concentration camp and was assigned a task to build from scratch a new camp at Gusen. When the Second World War broke out on the 1st of September 1939, people from across Europe were deported to Mauthausen, which gradually developed into a system of several interconnected camps. The Guzen camp went into operation in May 1940, and SS Captain Karl Chmielewski became its commandant. As the war progressed to accommodate the prisoners where they worked, the SS established several subcamps. Commandants of these camps, including Karl Chmielewski, reported directly to Mauthausen Commandant Franz Zierreis. Newly arrived prisoners were transferred to these camps from the main camp. During this phase, Mauthausen and Guzen were the concentration camps with the harshest imprisonment conditions and the highest mortality. Those who were ill or deemed useless by the SS lived in constant fear for their lives. In 1941, the SS started to construct a gas chamber and other installations at Mauthausen for the systematic murder of large groups of people. Living and working conditions in Mauthausen, as in Gusen, led to the death by murder, mistreatment, starvation, exposure and disease of more than half of the prisoners. In addition, German doctors subjected Mauthausen prisoners to pseudoscientific medical experiments, including testing levels of testosterone, experimenting with delousing chemicals, medicines for tuberculosis, and nutrition experiments. After his capture, Mauthausen Commandant Franz Zierreis recalled the inmates had been killed by gassing, hard labor, or through benzene injections, or how at an outside temperature of minus 12 degrees, they made the inmates bathe in water and then stand in the open, stark naked, until they died. Some inmates had to haul stones until they collapsed, then they were shot, and their record was annotated as trying to escape. Others were driven to the barbed wire fence, or were literally torn to pieces by the dog named Lord. 
At Mauthausen, inmates had to work in the quarries, often in unbearable heat or in temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius, which led to exceptionally high mortality rates. The rock quarry in Mauthausen was at the base of the so-called Stairs of Death. Prisoners were forced to carry roughly hewn blocks of stone, often weighing as much as 50 kilograms or 110 pounds, up the 186 stairs, one prisoner behind the other. As a result, many exhausted prisoners collapsed in front of the others in the line, and then fell on top of the other prisoners, creating a domino effect, the first prisoner falling onto the next and so on, all the way down the stairs. In the quarry, prisoners were forced to carry the boulders from morning until night, while being whipped by the Nazi guards. Whilst at Guzen, Khmielewski became notorious for numerous bouts of alcoholism and developed a reputation for extreme brutality. One of his mottos as camp commandant in Guzen was allegedly, a good prisoner in a concentration camp can't last longer than three to four months. He not only ordered the killing and torture of prisoners, he also personally participated in their murders and abuse. Khmielewski would kill inmates with clubs for no reason, beat them with heavy boots, and whip them with up to 150 strokes until they died. He took pleasure in drowning inmates in a water tank or scalding them with boiling water. Khmielewski was a twisted sadist, and his treatment of prisoners was unacceptable even to the other SS officers. Mauthausen camp commandant, his superior Franz Zereis, claimed after the war that Khmielewski had used the skin of prisoners to make things such as wallets and book bindings. Something Tsirais claimed was strictly forbidden by the Nazi authorities. Due to his inhumane behavior towards the prisoners, he earned the nickname the Devil of Guzen. One of Khmielewski's specialties were death baths, which were practiced especially during the winter time. This method of murder was the idea of SS Sergeant Heinz Jensch, and Khmielewski decided to apply this new form of execution to the inmates. The inmates, mainly those who were unable to work or ill, were selected to bath during the appeal. They were sent to the bathroom, where they were to stay naked under the showers. The holes for the water drainage had first been plugged, and icy water then started pouring over the prisoners under high pressure. SS men and capos would shout at the inmates to swim in the water, and the whole exercise lasted up to 30 minutes. Whoever resisted staying in the icy water was beaten in the back or head with an iron shovel. One Holocaust survivor, Teofel Chipionka, described what he had seen after 125 of his fellow inmates became victims of one of these death baths. He stated, The next morning, wanting to examine the effects of this horrible, murderous bath, I went to block number 32 to ask if the blockmaster had any things to return since a car would be coming to pick up the dirty laundry. The blockmaster, a real Satan in a human body, replied, Yes, you will receive 125 sets of clothes from the dead today. Pretending to know nothing about the bath, I peeked into the bathroom of block number 32. I opened the door and took a few steps back to a site I will never forget. The victims of the bath were arranged in a tall pile, like blocks of wood. Some were coming to life after they had warmed up. Some were opening and closing their eyes. Others were moving their arms or legs. And others were making various moans. Fifteen minutes later, all the prisoners were thrown onto the carts like blocks of wood and taken to the crematorium. It is estimated that up to 2,000 prisoners were killed by the Nazis through death baths. In early 1942, due to catastrophic hygiene conditions at Mauthausen and Guzen, Khmielewski was infected with typhus and was unfit for duty for nearly half a year. In September of the same year, he was transferred to the German-occupied Netherlands, where he was assigned the task of constructing Herzogenbusch concentration camp, also known as the Furcht Camp. Once it became operational in January 1943, Khmielewski became its commandant. In all, about 12,000 people, men, women and children, were imprisoned in Furcht, all of whom were eventually deported to Sobibor and Auschwitz. Usually, the transports to Poland went through Westerbork. By the beginning of October 1943, this was the fate of more than 10,000 people. Two transports, on the 15th of November 1943 and the 3rd of June 1944, went straight to Auschwitz. During his reign at Furcht, Chmielewski gained a reputation for corruption, and he was eventually tried for personally enriching himself through stealing diamonds from prisoners. Khmielewski was also a sexual deviant who raped the prisoners, and in 1944, an SS court sentenced Khmielewski to 15 years in prison 
for rape and embezzlement. He spent the rest of the war as an inmate at Dachau concentration camp. From there, Chmielewski was able to escape during the last days of war, and after visiting his family in St. Georgen, near Gusen, where his wife lived together with their son, he went into hiding with a farmer in Metmach in Upper Austria until the fall of 1946. With false papers, Chmielewski managed to return to Germany, where he made a living with farmers, breeding rabbits and trading eggs. However, he did not escape justice. In 1953, he was tried for perjury, fraud, and bigamy, and sentenced to a year in prison. In January 1959, after his real identity was discovered, he was arrested by West German police and accused of nearly 200 counts of murder. At his trial in 1961, he was found guilty of causing the deaths of prisoners through his brutality and was sentenced to life imprisonment with hard labor. During his trial, Chmielewski showed no pity over his actions in concentration camps and declared that the life of ill inmates and Jews had absolutely no value for him. The court pronounced him a sadist who took pleasure in killing prisoners whom he did not see as human. In March 1979, however, he was released from prison on mental health grounds and spent his last years in a care institution at Chimzer. When Chmielewski died there on the 1st of December 1991, he was 88 years old. There were no tears shed for Karl Chmielewski. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.